Welcome to ProjectCAD 3D Basics. This is Basics of Creating 3D Solids. To find links to any downloadable resources available for this video, make sure to check the description box below. For this video, I'll be using a new blank drawing, which I have already opened. I'll be using the Ribbon Full Workspace and I'll be accessing the tools in the modeling panel of the 3D Tools tab. So that we can better visualize the solids I'm going to be creating, I'll set my view to Southwest Isometric and the visual style to Conceptual. As I introduce you to a sampling of the kinds of primitive shapes you can draw in ProjectCAD, don't forget that the extended tooltip can help you to remember the steps you'll take to create the shape. For instance, here is the extended tooltip for the box shape we are about to create. To display it, hover over the icon for two seconds. Now that our editor is set up, I'll click on the box icon to launch the command. A box is defined just like a rectangle is, but with an extra step. I'll choose my start point, then the opposite corner. This base is always parallel with the XY plane of the current UCS. Now comes the extra step. I'm prompted to specify the height of the box. I could type it in for accuracy, but I'll just click a point above the base. That was easy. Remember that you can enter distances via the dynamic input boxes or from the command line. Next, I want to select the box to show you some editing concepts. When I select it, this dialog is displayed. It shows you some advanced features to simplify your work in 3D, including pressing the control key during selection and some settings options. It's certainly worth reviewing and applying these techniques as you continue using 3D in ProjectCAD. At some point though, you'll get it and will no longer want to see the dialog as it pops up every time you select a 3D object. I certainly don't want it every time I select something in these videos, so I'm going to check the Don't Show Me This Again box in the corner. At some point, you'll probably do the same. But don't worry, if you ever want to get this or any other suppressed dialog back, just call up the Options dialog and click the button shown in the General tab. Okay, with that being said, and with the box now selected, you'll see various blue boxes and points on it called grips. I'll click the arrow grip in the middle of the top plane of the box and pull the mouse up. As you can see, this is an easy way to quickly edit your 3D solids. Let's create a cylinder next. I'll expand the box icon and choose Cylinder. So if drawing a box started with a rectangle, it makes sense that a cylinder starts with a circle. Next, I'll specify the height, and that's it. I've drawn a cylinder. I'll continue to demonstrate a few more. The cone works just like the cylinder, a circle for a base and a height. How about a pyramid? This one is a little different. I'll specify a center point and a base radius then enter or select for the height. The default is four sides, but you can specify how many sides you want. I'll launch the command again, and this time I'll choose sides from the dynamic input prompt and enter three. I'll again define the base, now a triangle and a height. I'll use the 3D orbit tool for my mouse to better show the three-sided pyramid. To return to my view, I'll click the southwest isometric corner of the view cube. You can also create 3D solids from 2D entities. Let's explore these tools now. I'll return to my 2D coordinate system by choosing top from the view cube. I have a closed polyline on my clipboard, so I'll paste it in here to save time. It started as a rectangle, then I added some vertices and changed the ends to arcs. To demonstrate the extrude command, I'll return to a 3D view by clicking the front top edge of the view cube. I'll launch the extrude command found just to the right of the solids. I'm prompted to select objects, so I'll select my shape and press enter. Next, I'm prompted for a height. I'll click above my shape and it will turn into a 3D solid extruded up to the height I've defined. Next is revolve. It creates a 3D object by revolving a 2D object about an axis. I'll create a small rectangle to demonstrate. Instead of switching ribbon tabs, I'll enter the alias of REC into the command line. 
I'll launch the Revolve command and select the rectangle at the prompt. I'll specify the height of the extrusion as prompted. Next, I specify the endpoint of the axis, followed by the angle of revolution. I'll accept the default of 360 degrees. And that's it. The rectangle will be revolved about the defined axis, creating the shape we see here. I'll move my object over a bit, and you'll notice that the original rectangle is still there. Erase it if you need to, as I am here. Let's move on to the Loft tool. It creates a 3D solid in the space between several cross sections. To demonstrate this, I'll paste in three circles that I have already drawn. They are of varying sizes, with the bottom one on the XY plane and the others moved up along the Z axis by two and four units. I'll launch Loft and select each circle or cross section in the order of the loft, in my case from bottom to top. When I'm done, I'll press Enter and select the default of cross sections only from the options shown. The 3D object will be created from the loft command. Our final method is called sweep. It creates a 3D object or surface by sweeping a 2D or 3D curve along a path. Again, I'll paste in the entities I want to use, which is a helix with a circle at the starting end. I'll launch sweep, select the object to sweep per the prompt, enter to stop the sweep selection, and then select my sweep path. Just like that, my new 3D object is created. I'll restore the world coordinate system and return to the southwest isometric to see all of our new 3D objects. You can find out more information, download their 30-day free trial, or purchase your own ProjectCAD license at www.projectcad.com.